Hey guys, welcome back. This is Will, and now I want to talk a little bit about the piano roll and all of the MIDI functions in Reaper. Um, first things first, this is my layout here. This is my uh, standard contact template. Um, I'm going to talk through this a little bit. Uh, what you're seeing here, you'll notice that uh, it's very colorful. Uh, what I did, uh, again, you can just go track the colors, cut some color. Um, just to keep things organized, I made all of my MIDI tracks green here. Um, these light blue ones are the sends, and then the dark blue ones are the outs in contact, and this is the main contact thing. Um, and also, uh, I think as I advised in the last video, I do have these all under a single, um, a single contact folder, just so it's a little easier to see. Um, here's my contacts. It's nothing special. My outputs, close, far, dry. Um, these have to do with reverb, but it's all done as send. So what I often end up doing is setting them to dry and then manually saying how much uh, reverb I'm using and so on and so forth. Um, now on to business. So um, the way that you make a MIDI item in Reaper is simply hold down uh, control and drag. Drag to any length. Double click it to bring up the um, piano roll view. Uh, and once you're in here, you just click and drag to make notes. Um, to change the velocity, you drag this here. And that uh, number you see there is the velocity. You can do that with multiple, multiple uh, notes at a time. Um, you have the grid and snap settings here. So I've turned on the grid with this little magnet. The settings are here, so if I want the eighth triplet, the sixteenth, I'm using the mouse wheel to just change this very quickly. And now you can see here that it's quantizing to whatever I have here. Uh, unlike sonar, the grid is the same as the snap settings. So there is no separate thing for a grid and snap, uh, just to make things a little bit easier on the eyes. If you have a MIDI device, you can also just hit record and, and have at it. So record is control R. I like to turn on the metronome. That's this thing up here. You right click it to bring up the settings and change the volume here and other settings and so on and so forth. Um, let's record a little drum pattern. Okay, um, so now we have this drum pattern. I'm going to open up the piano roll view. One of the neat things about Reaper is it has nice uh, quantization control. So let's bring up all, let's select some uh, MIDI data here. Um, I'm going to press Q to bring up the quantize events dialog. I was mostly rushing in this, so I'm going to allow it to go to the right, which means later and not to the left. And now it looks like everything is aligning a little bit better. Remember that I have real-time preview on, so it's not actually performing it yet, but it lets me see what things will look like. You can adjust the strength. That's how much you want. Oh, and you can also do selected events just to do the ones that you've selected, or you can do all events. In this case, it doesn't actually matter. Quantize within is just kind of a threshold, so it's like if you're way, way off, then you can say, okay, we'll turn that down and don't even bother. Or you can say, I don't want things that are already kind of close to get even more surgical. So I'll just take that down and we can go. And now it's a little bit cleaner. Turn off the metronome. Cool. One caveat to keep in mind with uh, the quantization settings is if we had done quantize note length, just be sure to keep in mind that it's kind of counterintuitive, but note offs basically are the same as note lengths. So if you have some different setting here than you do here, um, that might produce some behavior that you don't actually want. So kind of keep that in mind. Maybe just, um, I, I really don't see the point of quantizing the note offs uh, as a separate thing, so I would just leave this unchecked. As you can see down here, we have these lanes. Um, you can set these to whatever you want, and you might actually start off with them looking a little bit more like this. So you may have to just click and drag to bring them back up. 
But um, yeah, I can have pitch wheel, volume, I can have my expression here. I can even edit um, uh, note velocity. So if I wanted to, you know, just have everything in like a smooth curve, I can just drag that. I don't, but there we go. Thing to keep in mind when using a controller like expression, for example, um, first of all, if you have any kind of snapping on, it'll follow that. So let's turn snapping off. Now, if I drag to the right, it gives kind of a coarse curve. If I drag to the left, it lets me do this fine curve here. And right mouse button will actually delete here. It doesn't select, it just deletes. Keep that in mind as well. Um, if you want to delete a note, you simply double click, or you can highlight it and press delete. It has nudging by default, and you may be able to change this, but um, you use the number pad. So uh, number pad six moves it over one grid space, meaning if I changed my grid, then that amount changes as well. Um, same with left. If I use number pad eight, takes it up a note, down a note. If I um, hold alt and press eight or two, that takes it up and down the whole octave. And then alt and four and six for left and right, We'll nudge it left and right one pixel. This isn't in by default, but if you want, you may want to go into the actions menu, which is um, question mark, and put in a shortcut for changing velocity. So let's say um, selected note velocity plus 10. You can put in some little shortcut for that, like uh, control alt 8 or something. Now minus 10, we'll just say control alt 2. And that'll make it easier to very quickly louden or soften groups of notes. Now that we have our MIDI data, um, let's talk a little bit about the way that Reaper handles MIDI. Um, so much like Logic, Reaper handles MIDI in terms of clips. It's not like Sonar where it just kind of has, here's my track and there are little groups, but the piano roll doesn't really care. Uh, in Reaper, it does. And what that means is that now that I've kind of reached the end of this clip, I can't really keep going unless I extend the clip. So you do that by moving the cursor so that it turns into this, not this one, this will just have it loop again, but instead you want this one. You drag it out and that makes the clip longer. You can just keep doing that forever. Now these clips behave very similarly to audio clips in that, yeah, we can loop it like that, but we can also drag it out and that will change the rate. I held it down alt to bring up that. And so now it's going a good bit slower. Um, you actually can also use fades. Uh, let's see what that sounds like. And you can similarly change the volume. What that's actually doing is it's changing the velocity. It's not doing anything with controllers or anything fancy like that. It's just changing the velocity of the notes in there. Um, so that can be actually very useful for, especially for percussive stuff, not so much for if you're doing woodwinds or something like that, because velocity doesn't really matter as much with that, um, but do keep it in mind. And um, another thing about the piano roll view, if you want it to look a little bit more like logic, you can dock the view with this button here. And now it's down there, you can do, this is exactly the same thing as we just saw. It's just docked in this area here, so undock that. But you can also do, if, um, if you liked this feature in Sonar, is, let me embiggen this a little bit. You can have an inline piano vol view. You just select whatever clip you want and press E. And now we're seeing an inline view. This actually as well works just the same as the regular piano roll view. The only difference, two only differences are one, if you want to zoom in and out, you use this thing here, um, up and down, moves it up and down, left and right changes the vertical zoom. Uh, horizontal zoom is just the same as you would do regularly in Reaper. Uh, the other difference is that these controller lanes here, they're just going to be whatever was just in your regular piano roll view. So if I want to edit something other than pitch and mod wheel, I would have to change it here to, uh, let's just say whatever. And now that'll show up here. 